Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 106. Title is Conducive to the Imperturbable, uh, also known as Ananja Sapaya Sutta. Ananja Sapaya Sutta, a link to the discourse is given in the description. Um, this discourse is basically on the uh, approaches that one person can use to attain the higher meditative states. Right, so it's a bit of a kind of an advanced uh, topic that is there, um, but I will try to share the gist of what I've learned. Uh, you can also read the discourse and get your own insights. So in this, Buddha says that uh, mendicants, uh, sensual pleasures are impermanent, hollow, false, and deceptive, made by illusion, cooed over by fools. Sensual pleasures in this life and in lives to come, sensual. Pl perceptions in this life and lives to come both are of the Mara's domain, Mara's realm. Mara is like the personification of evil in kind of uh, Buddhism like in Satan is there in Christianity. right? So Mara is that personification of all the negative qualities, harmful qualities. So these are all in the Mara's domain, Mara's realm, Mara's territory. They conduce to bad unskillful qualities such as desire ill will and aggression and they create an obstacle for a noble disciple who is training here. Now this comes to uh, the approaches toward to reaching the imperturbable. Imperturbable is the like the fourth jhana. So there are four, four absorptions in the Buddha's teaching that once a meditation medi person sits for meditation, he reaches first, second, third, fourth absorption. right? And then there are the various dimensions of nothingness, neither perception nor not perception so those so what are the kind of approaches to leading those kind of meditative states this is basically coming out here so first approach that is coming is that the the mendicant thinks why don't i med meditate with an abundant expansive heart having mastered the world and stabilized the mind basically it's like the loving kindness meditation that means you 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 get the love and compassion from within you and spread it in all four directions right so that is one way then buddha says that when a person does that when their body breaks up after death it's possible that the consciousness headed that way will be reborn in the unperturbable and this is said to be the first way of practice suitable for attaining the imperturbable which is the fourth jhana uh, second is the noble disciple reflects all form or the four primary elements or the form derived from the four everything is derived from the four primary elements that way the person meditates it's like meditating on the elements right that is again second way third way is that seeing that everything is impermanent and what is impermanent is not worth approving welcoming or clinging to Sim when a person practices in this way also this is like the third way of practicing practice suitable for attaining the imperturbable then there is this dimension of nothingness so the person who says who practices like all the perceptions which are arising knowing that they are all perceptions all the sensual pleasures all the sensual perceptions these are all perceptions when they cease without anything left over that is peaceful or sublime namely the dimension of nothingness so that is the one way that buddha says reaching the dimension of uh, nothingness. Second is that meditating on the emptiness of the self. That means the noble disciple meditates in the way and reflecting that this is this is empty of a self or what belongs to the self. So that is one way of second way of attaining nothingness. Then third way is that noble disciple reflects I don't belong to anyone anywhere and nothing belongs to me anywhere. Even in this way, if a person practices, he can attain the dimension of nothingness. Then the dimension of neither perception nor nor perception. So basically, the noble disciple reflects the sensual pleasures in this life or lives to come, sensual perceptions in this life or lives to come. All these perceptions are perceptions. When they cease without anything left over, that is peaceful, sublime, namely the dimension of neither perception nor nor perception. So that is another way of reaching dimension of neither perception nor not perception. Then Ananda asked a question to Buddha, uh, Sir, take a mendicant who practices like this. It might not be and it might not be mine. 
it will not be and we will not be mine i am giving up what exists what has come to be in this way they gain equanimity would that mendicant become extinguished so buddha says one of such mendicant may be extinguished while other may not so ananda asks what is the reason for this so buddha says that uh, when the person practices like this that uh, it may not may be it might not be mine they gain equanimity they approve welcome and keep clinging to that equanimity their consciousness relies on that and grasps it a mendicant with grasping does not become extinguished that means even of this notion of equanimity if you grasp at that then you will not get extinguished so ananda said but sir what is the mendicant grasping buddha is saying the mendicant is grasping at the dimension of neither perception nor nor perception ananda said sir it seems that the mendicant is grasping the best thing to grasp that means at a grasping level there is the best thing to grasp he is grasping that so buddha says yes the best thing to grasp is the dimension of neither perception nor nor perception but still this whole thing about grasping that will keep the person from being totally extinguished being totally free right so buddha says that take a mendicant who practices like this it might not be and it might not be mine it will not be it will not be mine i am giving up what exists what has come to be in this way they gain equanimity they don't approve welcome or keep clinging to that equanimity that is like the difference so their consciousness doesn't rely on that and grasp it a mendicant free of grasping becomes extinguished free of grasping in any way in any form to anything person gets extinguished so ananda says it's incredible sir it's amazing the buddha has explained to us how to cross over the flood by relying on one support or the other but sir what is the noble liberation so buddha says a noble liberation is one where the disciple reflects sensual pleasures in this life and in other lives lives to come visions in this life in lives to come perceptions of the imperturbable perceptions of the dimension of nothingness perceptions of the dimensions of neither perception nor nor perception that is identity as far as identity extends this is the deathless namely the liberation of the mind through not grasping so ananda i have taught the ways of practic- practicing suitable for attaining the imperturbable dimension of nothingness dimension of neither perception nor nor perception i have taught how to cross the flood by relying on one support or the other and i have taught the noble liberation i have out of compassion i have done what a teacher should do who wants what's best for the disciples here are these roots of trees and here are these empty huts practice absorption basically practice meditation practice absorption ananda don't be negligent don't regret regret it later that means buddha always said that don't be negligent because death is fast approaching you have the opportunity to practice now don't regret it later this is my instruction to you so this is 107 a bit a uh, technical a bit kind of uh, very advanced uh, but as students of the buddha it's all the words of the buddha that we hear they will create some effect some ripples of if wisdom in our consciousness so keep reading the sutras keep practicing and keep practicing your meditation do not delay so i hope this was useful do share your insights thoughts in the comment section namo buddhaya namo buddhaya